Last night, we brought you an in-depth look at baby due dates and how they can determine more than just when your baby will be born. In tonight's Pregnant After 35, Valley News Team's Rose Itzkovitz looks at a new study that could change the way our baby's due dates are determined. After my original due date got bumped up a couple weeks, I started to wonder what this could mean for my baby. If you're 35 and older, once you hit your due date, there may be a higher risk of some of these complications of going past your due date. Right now, doctors say one of the best indications to determine a due date is an early ultrasound. An early ultrasound in the first trimester should be accurate within five days of the true delivery date. But as you get farther along... Like a typical 20-week ultrasound that we normally do, that's got a margin of error about 10 days. And that could send delivery decision-making in the wrong direction. In late pregnancy, the margin of error is about three weeks. So she could be 36 weeks, she could be 30 weeks. And that's going to radically, was going to radically alter how we approached her situation. But soon, another way to predict due dates may be available. A new study suggests due dates could be determined by a simple blood test. The researchers say when you're pregnant, the baby's placental RNA gets mixed in with the mother's blood, meaning they can measure how far along a baby is by how much of a certain gene is expressed at a certain time. Stephen Quake, a professor at Stanford University, headed the study. He admits it was extremely small, only looking at 70 women total in two separate studies. But Quake says it was surprisingly successful. I don't want to oversell the results. This is a proof of principle. It's not a test that's ready to go in the clinic right, right now. And because of its size, experts I spoke with here tell me we shouldn't expect to see this come to fruition for around another decade. We need to have more studies to get a better understanding of how accurate this is. But Quake says he expects it to move much faster than that, as long as a larger study produces similar results. How do you think that'll be possible? Yeah, um, having done this before, one of the things I'm very famous for is inventing a blood test that replaces amniocentesis. Turns out Professor Quake's the guy to thank for a non-invasive genetic test many, including myself, have used. That was back in 2008. He says at the time, they thought it would take 10 years for it to be ready. It turned out it was in the clinic in three years because people got excited. They did large trials and it was just like everyone got on board because of the magnitude of the impact on maternal and fetal health. And this is an even bigger one. The test so far is about as accurate as an ultrasound. But if a larger trial proves successful, the blood test option could be much cheaper and essential for those that can't afford an expensive sonogram. Rose Skvitz, Valley News Live. Quake says he hopes to get the next study rolling this time next year. That, that one will include around 5,000 women, as opposed to the two studies that had around 30 or so women in them.